welcome to this 50th episode of the podcast. Yeah, we have to do the <laughs> review thing. My amazing co-host, Lindsay Grayling. I I can't think of anyone else that would have rather have done all these episodes with than you. So oh. <laughs> you also, my friend, you keep it on, on track because I tend to like waffle off. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing you do. That's how you get into more little interesting things and uh, all that cool stuff. So, um, yeah, we're, this for this particular episode, because now I'm waffling, we will just talk about what we've been doing this past year. And I mean, yeah, we took the time to actually uh, do our stuff and all. So thank you for tuning in. Dressed up for you guys. We dressed up for you guys. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> For all of these episodes, we've met a lot of people, actually, haven't we, Lindsay? Oh, we've met some awesome people. It's been so fun. It's been we, so fun. Yeah. And also lovely as well. Yeah. I don't think there's really hardly anyone that we didn't enjoy meeting, I can't think of. Um, we've met art directors. We have met so many artists, and we have many more to come. We have met uh, several companies. Who else have we met? Um, well, obviously, publishers, yes, publishers, publishers of course. artists, um, is there manufacturers? <laughs> yeah, is there something that you in particular take away from all the stuff, all the people that we've met? Well, there's tons, isn't there? There's um, all the advice on starting your own card series and becoming a publisher yourself that's always really helpful when you're planning on going in that direction. Um, it's interesting to hear different people's techniques and stuff, and they've come out with, you know, materials they use that I've no, never heard of and would fancy giving a try or, you know, this with this and that with that that I've never tried. Um, yeah, tons of stuff. And what I find is interesting is hearing um, all the weird things that collectors collect, and I say that in the best way, best way possible, you know, I mean things that I never would have thought that people would collect, like the pieces of barbed wire. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. That, that was interesting. interesting, and that there's actually a story behind all these different things. That was with, actually, actually I think that was Kurt that talked about that, if I remember right. So, yeah, we've been learning a lot, and because we're becoming publishers in a small scale ourselves, we have been learning a lot from everyone that we've been talking to. So, speaking of which... What have you got coming forward now, uh, Lindsay? Well, um, I just released my own my own comic book. It's only short. It's only about 50 pages. But it's all the work I did when I was at college. I spent, you know, the whole college year building this brand and, and the characters. And I did a little bit of animation. Obviously, I can't conclude that in a book. Um, but I... Did a, a comic strip as well. Awesome! I love that. <laughs> so in in this, there's kind of there's little funny rhymes and comics, and you know, if you like cats, it's it it's a winner, really. <laughs> I want a copy. Where can we get a copy of that? Well, I haven't been promoting them a lot, to be fair, because when I set my website up, I want there to be enough products on there. You know, I don't want them to click on and there's just like one product to buy. So I've sort of sent the ones out that have sold already initially um, and I'm not pushing it anymore until I get it all set up. And, you know, there's there's a variety of things for people to buy on the website. You see. Okay. Yeah. So we can't get one yet. You can if you message me directly, but I'm, you know, I, I'm not pushing it. I've not been out advertising it and, okay. you know. Do you have a set date that you're really that you're opening your website or I would like to do it in conjunction with the Kickstarter that I'll have coming up in January. So okay. once once that's up and running, I will launch it and get all that going. Okay. Well, what's your Kickstarter for? Tell us all about that. Uh my Kickstarter, it's um it's gonna be a card set and I think we're gonna have about 36 cards. I'm going to do it so like they all fit on the nine, you know, the nine spaces in the uh, collector's folder. 
So there'll be like 18 cards, there'll be like uh, six character cards, there'll be puzzle cards, um, and the set's called Die, Rabbit, Die. And that's an example of the kind of artwork that will be in it. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> so it's basically little bunny characters killing each other in imaginative, funny ways. Um, that's going to be January. Over the course of next year, I'm hoping to have Krampus ready to launch before Christmas. So that's my mission for the card company next year. Um, and also, oh. I would like to, to do uh, Cute Afflictions, which is... That's like, my friend makes dolls, and I do artwork of her dolls. So if I can get like a little set of them pushed out as well. Probably just a simple nine card set in between everything else. That would be nice to do. Oh, cute afflictions. That's awesome. I didn't know you were doing that one. So that's three sets for you next year. That's pretty cool. Hopefully, yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, and, another, <laughs> and one more. I, I, I'm not mentioning that yet. Like, wait till I've done a bit more work on that. I have no promo cards for it or anything yet. I mean, if anybody does want a promo card for Die, Rabbit, Die, Cute Afflictions or Krampus, you can also message me and I'll send you one of those out. And what's the address they should message you to? Um, my email is zoidart at hotmail.co.uk. Z-O-I-D-A-R-T at hotmail.co.uk. Okay. Remind me to put that in the show notes. We have got to get on all of that. that, that that is so cool. Are you and, doing? Are you also doing any sets in conjunction with other companies? I am. I am. I do an, an annual set with um, Richard from RR Parks Cards, and we do Kitty Eerie. Cool. And just a little black cat for Halloween. He likes to dress up in you know different fun Halloween costumes. Um, set two of that came out this year. Uh, set one sold out last year but I do have some more and I'm going to put them together in a 20 card set complete with tuck box and everything so it'll be nice if anybody's already bought the 10 card set I will send you the 10 cards and the tuck box so you know you can have everything do you have, <coughs> you have tuck box near you that we could see the tuck box I haven't I don't seen them it. yet so <laughs> I can't no um, and I need what I've done is I've got tuck boxes and I'm going to be ordering stickers to put on the tuck boxes so I can use them for all different sets. It, just to start with, you know, just while I find my feet and get running and see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That's really, that's a big change over the past year that you've just been working for other companies and now yeah. you're your own stuff. That's awesome. Getting there. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, yeah. uh, Pardon? I was just going to say, you've also published this year, haven't you? Yeah. You actually did it. And I was planning to do it at the same time as you, but <laughs> it just didn't happen. Well, in that book, like I said, I actually seriously want a copy of that book. So you have to let us know when, when you've got your website open and uh, we can all go and get what you're going to become the cat woman. <laughs> I already am, Chris. Oh, you already am. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Strangely, as it happens, one of our neighbors has a thing for cats, too. And outside, I think for the past couple of years, she had something like 15 cats all over the place. But they have a very big piece of land, you know, I mean, it's a big piece of land. But this winter, she's going to have six cats inside her house. I mean, and they, you know, yeah, so you've got competition, Lindsay. <laughs> you've got competition. I've that many. Most I've ever had at one time is three. I couldn't do any more than three. And they all look so different as well. I actually did a painting of them all. I'll did show you? you it. It's not quite finished. Where is it? Oh, yeah, this one. Oh, let me scoot that. Oh, God, yeah. Can you see? Yes. This one, bird. That was Egg. And that was Colin. Oh, you should make a poster of that. It's not finished yet, but... I need to finish it off because it's almost finished. That's gorgeous. Oh, what, what are you painting it with? Oh, that's acrylic. Acrylic? Oh, so you yeah. do use acrylics. Yeah, but it's... 
I don't use them painterly. I, I, it's more like I've shown people my acrylic paintings before and, and they've thought it's done in pencil crayon because it's very solid, you know. So um, I use them, but just not probably as they're meant to be used, <laughs> just in my own way. Paint is just meant to be used. There's no one way to use paint at all, in my opinion, anyway. Can't I mean, wait. Did you see the other one I did, the feline family tree? I oh, think I think I don't remember. Did you show it show it again? I can't remember if I did. Well, this is what I worked on when Remy was a baby because I didn't get much time. So once a week I sat down and did a little oh, bit right. of time. Oh man, people are oh, oh, it took so long. But it was quite therapeutic, you know, just to relax. Oh that's stunning. <laughs> that really is stunning, Lindsay. I'm what are you I'm going to do with those because you know before I got into sketch cards, I, I wanted to be a feline artist. I wanted to join the Society of Feline Artists and do um, exhibitions and you know all that. But mm -hmm. you need at least three pieces before you can apply. So obviously, I had one piece. I was just working on the second one, and then the sketch cards just blew up. So I've not managed to get back to it yet. But I'm sure. Yeah. You but you could also do something with those. I mean, they're stunning. The one with the Christmas thing, that would be an awesome Christmas card. I do need to start, you know, selling products, cards and things like that. It's just, you know, you need to have so much outlay in the first place to get your products and then get selling and going. It can be tricky when you first start out, can't it? So A lot of investment of time, as we've learned from a lot of other people, it takes kind of a little bit of a... People who become successful have often been doing it for like a million years beforehand and then poof, for whatever reason, it just works. Well, you have to take risks as well. And, uh, you know, only recently have I become a bit more of a risk taker and having a bit of money behind me to start doing these things, you know. Because in my 20s, I had nothing. I, I, I think I used to live on 40 quid a week or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was seriously poor, so I couldn't, you know. But now I'm in a position to start, and hopefully it'll keep going. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I would love my my goal. I'll tell you right now, my goal next. Well, I've got a lot of goals for next year. I mean, I figure I may as well have goals until I'm dead, because once I'm dead, I can't have any more goals. So, <laughs> well, a big one, long sleep is your goal. Then. <laughs> a big long sleep is your goal then. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd like to do a tandem set with you. I'm going to be doing um, a set with uh, another publisher. I won't mention anything now because it's not quite ready yet. But um, yeah, I'm going to be doing a couple of sets of my own this year, and one of the uh, next year, I should say. Well, this year too, but mostly next year. But yeah, I would love to do one with you if you have the time, because we know how time is so precious and. We both have families and, you know, it's important to have time for our families too. Um, yeah, so I put out um, this year last book and it's the last one. I am not doing any more. <laughs> not because I don't like it. I love doing it, but it's the, the logistics involved with putting a large book. Because these are eight and a half by 11. They're big and mm -hmm. a lot of pages. Shipping is ridiculous. I mean, just ridiculous for these things, especially after COVID and, and print. The cost of printing has gone up a lot and it's full color. Yeah, I don't know if you can see full color throughout. Um, a bit closer. Yeah, it's difficult to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's so, yeah, these are. Um, no, these are. I don't know who this is from. If I get myself out of the way here. Anyway, these are, uh, these are, I have one complete set of volume one, two, and three. Wow. Cover, and one complete set in hardcover. Um, ah. I'm trying to think of what to do with them. This is the first one. This was the one I did I number two years ago. Then we have the second one which was 2021, yeah, 2021. And then this last one, which I just showed you, 2022. 
So I don't know. I might do a giveaway with them. The hardcovers I might do as a bit of a fundraising thing for the podcast because my amazing co-host Lindsay and I do this on our own time, which we love doing because it's super fun. But it does take a little bit of money to pay for the Zoom, to pay for all that stuff, and we can't work while we're doing this. So maybe one of those three will be, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, and I also have discovered, oh, I also have for the, for the, which one was this? Oh, this was for the last book. Lindsay's <laughs> card is on this promo card. You, the so, diary of a diary of love. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of meta, you know, promo for a promo type of thing. Anyway, that comes with the last book. And then, um, I've discovered that I really like metal cards and 3D cards. This is the 3D card that goes. Oh, I love that one. Boom. <laughs> Explode. So, yeah, I'll, I'm really liking these. So I'm, for my the next set that I'm putting out, I'm definitely having one of these. And I think the theme for that set should work well because the set I'm going to do next year will be a small set like yours, Lindsay. Ideally, about either 20, uh, uh, 9, 18, 20, probably 27 or 36 cards. I'm not sure yet, but it'll be called Draco. And the first set will probably be called the sampler set because I'm going to do just some of my own dragon paintings, watercolors, sketches, and uh, things like that. And Lindsay might be doing some if she has the time. And then after that, I'd like to visit dragons from each different culture. So that could be for an interesting, uh, like maybe once or twice a year, it could make for a nice little. So, so yeah, dragons, you know, explosions and stuff. And then metal cards. I'm loving metal cards. This is white metal. That's gorgeous, that one. From fairy metal. This was, uh, uh, no, it's not focusing. I can't believe how vivid that image is on metal. I can't get it to focus on the card, but yeah. Are they, is the white metal the same price as the other metals? Or Yes, it is. It is this. Oh, it's melting. <laughs> the, it is the same price, but you have a you have a choice between. Um, I think it's gray and white and bronze. I'm not sure. I'm trying to get him on the podcast, but he's been too busy. Uh, so it'll probably go to maybe January, hopefully February. There we go. All righty. So that's it. This is a watercolor I just picked of something I'd done years ago. So, but I'd love to do a dragon for a metal card. That could be kind of cool. You see the back? You can see it's brushed gray. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it's yeah, so. they are hard. You can throw these against the wall, and nothing will happen. <laughs> I wouldn't talk about the lenticulars. They tend to be a little bit more fragile, but the metal ones, you can roll over them with a car, probably. They're very good. Uh, Perna put one of my cards as, as a metal chase card for the oh, yeah. Halloween set. So if I've got it here. Um, it looks gold to me, but maybe it's the bronze. Oh, I don't know where it is. I don't know. That's... <laughs> yeah. It's around here somewhere. I end up with that much on my desk. Brenda does some really nice metal cards. Way yeah. back when I when I was doing cards for them and all of that, and they did all these metal metal add-ons and things. It's just just awesome. They they're very limited though. Mm. And I think the the are you going to be doing metal cards for your set? I think I'm going to be doing one <clears throat> of because my plan is if Die Rabbit Die goes well. I will create some new characters to join in the fun next time. So my metal card will be the new secret character that you'll get next time. I, I do Die Rabbit Die Series 2, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So cool. I'm going to keep adding them in. <laughs> Are you going to have like a, che a checklist with all your characters? <laughs> you love a checklist, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. I do. The It'd be cool to do some kind of leaflet. I mean, maybe maybe a checklist, but it, it's so new and there's not really much to check off yet. Mm. So, um, obviously, the top tier of the Kickstarter, everything's going to be in that. So, if they don't want to have to chase things, they don't have to. And 
you know, if they must have everything, then they can just go top tier. Cool. Are you going to have a limited uh, a, a, a one card that's like super limited or? Um, I thought about maybe having the metal card as an add on. Apart from top tier, you can pay to add that on. Um, I was toying with the idea of having some special ones, but I decided to dial it back a bit and keep it a bit more simple for my first go. So it is my very first one, and it's a little bit scary. <laughs> I want to make sure I don't mess it up or, you know. Mine, my first one is going to be uh, kind of simple, a little bit too, although I will have extra cards just because I've already done these extra cards, so I know what's involved. And if I can give any advice, it's have your extra cards done way ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> because the people who produce these, um, uh, well, these come... I know the particulars are a bit of a wait, aren't they? These take a long time to come and go. So you mm. want to order your lenticulars way in advance. And the metal ones from Fairy Metal, they're like they're gorgeous. And, and what's handy is you can order only the amount that you want. If you don't want a thousand metal cards, you don't have to order a thousand metal. You can order a hundred. You can... You can order what you want, but they're super, super busy. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're super, super busy. So you want to be sure to leave a lot of time. Mm. It may take, they may tell you that it'll take a month, but it could take a couple of months just because they're so busy. They're super nice people. I really hope that I can get them on uh, in January or February or something. Very metal. You got to come on and talk to us. <laughs> Oh, I hope they do. I hope they do. Yeah. And I'll also be releasing a small set of uh, motorcycle cards because I did a whole set. Already. <gasps> so that's something I know nobody else has done yet. Oh, now that I mentioned it, maybe that, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, it's that, but that'll be super small, maybe nine cards and all. Some dragons on them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be you. <laughs> oh, I'd commission you to do dragons on the motorcycles. That would be awesome. Oh, it'd be like um, a mashup for us, wouldn't it? Your beautiful yeah. bikes and then. <laughs> so <it's> like... <laughs> okay, make a note of that. I love that. That that would be for later on March or something, February or March. If I can find it in my sketchbook, a long time ago, I actually drew like a dragon on a motorcycle, like a, a funny one. I hope I can find it for our sketchbook episode. I yes. don't need to go through everything and see if there's anything of interest in there. Because I'm very messy when I sketch, so a lot of it won't even be worth showing. Oh, you have to show it anyway. That's exactly what people think. They think, oh, well, you know, your sketchbook has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, I've got like 20 sketchbooks, and the vast majority is just like horrible, disgusting sketches. That's the whole point of it all. You have to have a place where you can do that. I'll do I'll sketch over the top of sketches. <laughs> <laughs> they're like working sketchbooks they're up to draw pretty pictures that are you know so yeah. you you gotta get all the, the evil stuff out of your brain and on the paper so that you have room for the good stuff you know and then there's little random doodles where I've got fed up a bit and just drawn a stick body <laughs> so like a nice face with a stick body in. <laughs> well, at least the stick bodies are not killing each other <laughs> <laughs> They probably are. I've not looked at them for a while. <laughs> oh my God. I do like comedy horror. <laughs> oh, that could be a fabulous set to do, a comedy horror. Yeah, What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, that's an amazing film. Have you seen that? No. Have Is you it... not seen it? No. <gasps> yes, watch when it. it when did it come out? God, I think it's been out a while now. I couldn't tell you what year it came oh. out. What we doing? I, think I were late to the party on that one, but it's really good. What's it called? <laughs> what, what we do in the shadows. We do in the shadows. Okay. Have you seen Flight of the Concords? In the Concords? You've not seen Flight of the Concords. That's funny as well. <laughs> but it's one of the guys from Flight of the Concords, isn't it? <laughs> I'm seriously lacking in my uh, TV and movie watching, aren't I? <laughs> I'll just watch every single comedy that comes out. I've been watching a Canadian one recently, actually. Oh, yeah? Um, Which one's that? Kim's Convenience. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I mean, oh. I've always 
loved I've always loved Trailer Park Boys. I thought that was amazing, but like I've only just found Kim's Convenience. I'm quite enjoying it. Kim's Convenience. I haven't watched very many episodes just cuz well, I don't know. I watch a lot of other stuff, but um yeah, that one was aimed I think the aim of that one was to kind of poke light fun at um how can we say this uh you know, uh, uh, various um, cultures and stuff like that, you know, to, like, not be so serious about it. You I know? like it called shoplifters of steel. He yeah. is a steel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I've heard that. It's funny. I should actually catch up on that. So, um, actually, we're doing back-to-back -back episodes, theoretically. Um, um, so, yeah, live video thing here um nope but i haven't heard from the person we're supposed to be interviewing in about 20 minutes so we may carry on a little bit so are we going to do um talk about giving away uh how are we going to do a giveaway are we going to, if people are interested perhaps they could comment on this video and we give them a number and we do like a raffle yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. I had wanted to get some kind of art supplies or something for the giveaway and all, or, you know, something like that, or maybe some trading cards or something, but I just didn't get to it. I just didn't get to it. So, uh, yeah, you have that awesome book. I may invent an ID. Yep. <laughs> Do you have your Pikachu or whatever that kind of pops up and goes? <laughs> Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah, the, the thing you had the other day. <laughs> it's not Pikachu, it's Ninja Turtle, of course. Oh. <laughs> you know, These were bought for me by the wonderful Matt DeHart, who we have interviewed before. Yes. He got me, like, all four of these. Oh. Like... <laughs> that is so awesome. That's it's great to have a pen handy, because I've got art pens coming out my ears, but when you're just looking for a biro, <laughs> you know yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah well it's a good idea yeah we could have people comment um also in the facebook group and give them a number and then on the video comment section below also and we'll give them a number and uh because not everybody's on facebook well that's true that's true you no know, um uh so yeah comment on the video below if you'd like a copy of uh Lindsay's book the title of which is again die um no it is zoids funny cats you have to be cats zoids funny cats well they maybe not i don't know i'd love to get some feedback on it and what people think of it and whether they think it's funny people who've had it so far said they think it's funny well, well hey. my friend was reading it at the last comic con i was at and she was laughing so <laughs> here you go Please. yeah I'll give away a copy of the last book because the first one I that's that one is the last one that I've got that I kept back for me that I decided I'm going to use to generate maybe a little bit of income for the podcast but I have several of these these and the volume 2 I've got actually lots of extra still need one of those so um if anyone wants a copy Post in the thing below and we'll give you a number and we will do a raffle. When would we do the raffle? Perhaps in December? Yeah. Yeah. Make it a bit Christmassy. <laughs> so in the in the show notes below, we'll have decided what date we'll do the raffle. If anybody posts below, I mean, wouldn't that be awful if nobody posts? <laughs> oh, we've got more stock then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so, free stuff and uh if if we actually make it to episode 100 which i don't know if we'll get there but if we made it well then we'll have like a, a truckload of stuff to send because you know that would be crazy but yeah so keep an eye out for Lindsay's kickstarter and the podcast kickstarter if you want to help us keep going for the following year to pay the expenses for the following year that'll be just one time that we do that and but especially Lindsay's Kickstarter, and then keep an eye out for our new sets that are coming along. Small sets, affordable. They won't be costing uh, two hundred. You'll you'll be launching your Kickstarter in January, also, won't you? 
Um, I think that one for the for the dragon set will probably be in February. Okay. The the date is not absolutely set yet, but um, that will probably be in February, very likely. But I'm keeping that fluid so I don't uh, stress out too much. <laughs> I want to have fun doing the paintings and the drawings for that because I want to do it my way. That's going to be, well, you know how it is now. Now that you have your own set, you've got control over what it looks like, mm. what you're doing, how much you can promote. You don't have to ask I anyone else. To be too hard yeah. on myself because when I do that, it never gets finished. You yeah. know, I could be better, could be better, but I'm just going to do it. Um, most of the artwork's done already. I'm just, uh, you know, doing the finishing final cards and bits and bobs. So hopefully I'm going to be ready. <laughs> You will be. Now you've already, you've mentioned it to the world that it's going to be in January, so you have no choice about it. Well, the last video I re released said it was going to be this summer, so, you know, <laughs> hopefully people are still with me because <laughs> I, I'm really trying. I'm really trying. But I've not I've not been taking on much new work, you know, from clients and stuff, so be, just so I do have time to sort it all out. It needs to happen. Yeah. You know, I can only work do so much work for other people for so long before I'll get exhausted. So, you That's know. a common thing we've heard from a lot of artists that we've talked to this past year, um, how um, they adore working for companies and doing all these different things, but eventually it feels like you're suffocating a little bit. It gets burnout. I mean, it's lovely when you work for companies who are happy for you to just do 10. Yeah, because it's not too bad. It's not too, you know, it's not too stressful. There's not too many to finish. You can do a good job. It's when it becomes 30, 40, 50. <laughs> and some of us veterans are like, remember when we used to do 400 cards in two weeks? <laughs> oh, it makes me shake and shiver even when you mention that. There's not a chance. Not a chance for me anymore. No, those, those days are done. I'll go pump gas before, uh, or electricity or whatever the... <laughs> it's progressed into a different thing though isn't it before it was quick sketches and now it's masterpieces so yeah. you know that's Which the way it's going you no know, it's, it's an, and we're not knocking working for companies at all not at all you know it's great i've made friends working with other companies um nearly all the art directors i've ever had contact with are actually really nice people and try hard to uh to coordinate everything, it's it's not always easy for them either. I, I have enjoyed very much um, working for companies and all, but um, uh, you know, for one or two of them, it's it's become a little bit um, difficult because the pay rate has changed, and um, well, you have to you have to eat. I mean, <laughs> come on, you gotta eat. That's yeah, I mean, what well, recently? What's happened? I've had so many extra. Ex unexpected expenses recently yes. Yes. you know <sighs> yeah. gotta win gotta win money <laughs> so to recap uh what we got so far and then we have some questions actually that we'll get to and a few uh, updates because again i think i think we got i think we got dumped by our next uh invitee or something so we'll just keep on going uh, uh yeah, a quick recap dressed up and we've been stood up yeah <laughs> yeah we have no dancing partners right now damn we'll dance with each other ah, there we go <laughs> okay oh no, no i have to put some music in in the background yeah a little acdc <laughs> and then Lindsay can take out her drumsticks mm. yeah. it's been a while it's been a while you should play drums with my son. If we ever actually get over to visit you, I'll get him to bring his drumsticks. <laughs> well, I've got a music studio, so more than welcome to get in there if you visit me. Could all have a play. <laughs> You'll be impressed. I guarantee it. Um, okay, so yes, I have a quick resume. Uh, Lindsay's book. Comment below if you'd like a giveaway and get after her to send you a copy if you don't get on if you don't win a copy. Um, Lindsay's uh, Kickstarter in January for Die Rabbit Die. I mean, who doesn't want killer bunny rabbits? I mean, who doesn't want cute bunnies that destroy each other? Yeah, there you go. Hey, eh? 
<laughs> and then uh, this podcast has a, and we're only asking, we're just hoping to get at least $300 to pay the fees for the year. Um, if there's more, we'll have, be able to go get a cup of coffee every once in a while. That'd be awesome. But at least pay the fees for the year. That would be super nice if anyone would would like to do that. And um, yeah, either volume two or volume three of the, the Art of Sketch Cards, there'll be a giveaway for that. So that's one of two books that you can pick. Post below, we'll give you a number. If you're in the Facebook group, post there. Um, I have my dragon set, Draco, series one. That Kickstarter will probably be in February, but I'll let everybody know about that. Okay, so now we're going to go on to some questions. First of all, the most important question comes from someone we interviewed who wants to know your true feelings about turtles. <laughs> My true feelings about Ninja Turtles. You don't like Ninja Turtles, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay doesn't like Ninja Turtles. It's the greatest thing that's ever been created ever. They're just awesome. Love of different dimensions. The, the characters themselves are collectible. They, they all look the same but they've got different weapons and then later on different colored masks. And over time they've developed their own personalities. So many things you can do. And my favorite thing about them is you can draw them so differently, like apply so many different styles to them. Yeah. Have there been any trading card sets of turtles? Yes. eh? surely I don't, but a customer who I did some comic book covers for, bless him he sent me he doesn't do the internet so i can't tag him or anything like that um but he sent me these and they're original uh i can't remember if it's 80s or 90s uh 1990 awesome how cool is that i used to run home on a thursday to watch it and so, so this person put that set out by themselves no, 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 no. It, I think it's just some odd cards he had lying around and he knows I like turtles, so he sent me them. And now I just want to what collect company, them. What company but, do they come from? Sorry? What company do they come from? What, what, what company? company? Yeah, who who did those cards? In Is case it, there are any other fans that want one. Was it Mirage? I can't remember. I'm not finding a logo. Oh, yeah, Mirage. I remember standing next to these in the supermarket when I was a kid and just, I, I grew up really poor. We never had much, really, um, in terms of, like, you know, toys and things and spending money. So I just used to stop next to them in the supermarket, like, looking at them. Because I've always loved little trading cards as well. So I did, my mum did used to buy me the comic once a week, though. I've okay. still got my comics from when I was a kid. And, oh, that's really so cool. I think I lost all my comic books that I had. I didn't have very many, but I did have a bunch of them. And well, I had... all, all my memories, they ended up getting chucked away because uh, my mum and her husband got divorced and he went in the attic and just threw everything away. So luckily when I moved out, I'd taken my comics with me. So that's why I've still got them and I'm so grateful. Like I've at least got something that I can remember my childhood, you know? Yeah. Oh, most of my stuff is all gone too, actually. I have a couple of things. I have a couple of things. I had kept all the newspaper clippings of the, of the, um, the uh, you know, when you had the, the funny papers, um, the cartoons and all that. Well, I had kept all the Prince Valiant because <gasps> I loved the way he drew horses and I wanted to draw horses. And I really liked the, the I mean, it, it was beautiful artwork. So I had kept them all and they're all gone. But I guess you can find them online now, so, you know. But I had kept them all. On eBay, uh, it was quite a few years ago now. Someone was selling, like, a, a Ninja Turtles notebook. No. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And they cut all the Garfield comic strips out of the paper and put them in this notebook. And I love turtles and I love Garfield. And I thought, I know these aren't my memories, but I'll buy it just because it's such a cute thing. Like, yeah. I've still got that somewhere. But oh, <laughs> that's really fun. You kind of helped keep someone else's memory alive a little bit of their. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was so cute. But well, Garfield's amazing. I I think we still have uh, whoa three or four Garfield books downstairs. We got in the kids when they were small, and I read them like 
tons of times. Oh, uh, I've got tons of them, and then I passed them on to Remy. Remy loved them, yeah. but he still does. You know, he still reads them and laughs. So that was good. They they have a Garfield Christmas uh, special every year that I watch, except for one. It's like the Nine Lives of Garfield or something like that. Mm. So it's like uh, I don't know, little cat stories of different uh, all through different eras and different tales and stuff. But there's one story that is just so sentimental and sad. It makes me cry every. Oh. So that's the only one I don't watch. I watch all the others. <laughs> The one that's so sad just makes me cry. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like watching sad things either. Some oh. people really love watching sad things and getting all upset. I really, no, I'm all about the comedy. I don't. Oh, yes, comedy rules. <laughs> I remember putting off watching Schindler's List for the longest time because everyone told me it was so sad. I cannot. I have not watched it. I just don't know if I could do it. <laughs> well, when I watched it, I mean, I've seen Grave of the Fireflies by Studio Ghibli. And I thought that was way worse than um, Schindler's List. Yeah. Even though it's animated, it just absolutely rips your heart out. And I thought, well, I won't, I'll never watch it again. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad I did, but I'll never watch it again. Because too sad. Too sad. I, I don't have what it takes to handle that kind of thing. No. No. Oh, I'm streaming tears. No. <laughs> We're all dressed up. <laughs> I know, I know. No crying today. No. Makeup run. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to make me cry, cry in a heartbeat. Um, <laughs> oh, so um, then we also had, um, let's see, uh, Wolfie actually asked a question on the non sport update forum. He would like to know more about the costs and how much artists get paid doing sketch cards and how much we think we should be paid. <laughs> I think we have actually talked about this in the past a couple of times, <laughs> but well, it, I don't mind talking about it. ranges from like three to $10, I'd say. Yeah, I think not a lot. Not a lot. Um, it, it's your APs that you make money on. If, you, if your APs are popular, then you can do okay. But say like my... <sighs> I'll use my Star Wars cards as an example. If I charge, if I charge four hundred for my APs, it still only works out that I'm getting paid eleven dollars a card. Okay, you did the math. You know, for for my own personal stuff, I charge thirty pounds for a card. So even with that high price on your APs, it's still more. You know, still makes you want more money to, you know, not to work for them and do your own stuff. But I will say the doing the cards for the sets, like if you're a new artist or something like that, it is true that more people will see your work if you're oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a good thing to do when you. I'm not trying to put ever anyone off. I mean, no, it's no, a good no, thing no. To do when you're starting out, and it helps your skills and your speed. And I would recommend it to anyone who wants to get into art, any kind of art, you know, just hitting those deadlines, learning to hit the deadlines and speeding up and just the fact that you can't start again because you only have so many cards and that's it. You know, you have to learn how to fix your mistakes and yeah, really, really good. Good point. You know, when you're, when you only have like one piece of paper or whatever, when you're home and you're just playing in your sketchbook or something, it doesn't matter. You know, you can just, you know, erase it or do it again or, get another sheet of paper or something like that. But with the cards, you're sent X amount of cards. You normally, for the bigger companies, you don't get extra cards in case you make a boo-boo. Yeah. So you have to learn. Uh, and that's like one of the really big lessons I find is learning to deal with what you've done, you know? I remember there's a, there's only been one set where I failed so badly that I just couldn't hand them in. And it, it was a set for Richard Parks. Um, I was trying like this cartoon style and I'd done a few and uh, I just couldn't accept it. So, you know, I did, I did a few acrylic paintings. Obviously Richard picked up on it. He's like, there's a few that are a different style in it. Cause usually I'm quite consistent with my style. And I said, well, I would have rather have done that for you than send you what was on them. Cause I'd, I just couldn't, <laughs> I just couldn't do it. 
So but you, you did manage to make a solution out of something that you thought, you know, didn't work for you. And these are things that happen. And sometimes you just have to deal with it. And you learn a lot that can be applied to when you do your own sets or your own work, or even if you do something that has nothing to do with sketch cards. I, I don't know. I find managing to find quicker ways. Like I you, you, you spoke about that one time too, you know, how long you can take to work on a drawing and it can like take forever because you want to get it right. You want to get it perfect. Well, if you do that forever, and I remember doing this myself, you know, if it takes you six months to do one drawing, you're never going to get anywhere, first of all. And then secondly, you lose interest in doing it. You lose the passion to do it. Um, so being forced to, you know, begin, work on it, and end is another huge, huge lesson. I don't even know if they t can teach you that in school. No, it, it's finishing finishing things and working to a deadline and it has to be done and if you're not happy it's tough absolutely yeah. it's tough. you just gotta hand it in there are uh, things that i've done that i was not happy with but i mean you had to and then i learned bon, okay i have to find a, a better way of doing that particular situation i had you know you, you learn from it so if you, if you do these errors and you learn from them it's great then you go on and you know well, you do. You, you're forced to find a way to make it work, you know. <laughs> so how much do you think we should be paid for these cards? That's one of the questions. Well, to say I charge £30 each for my own, <laughs> it'd be nice to get that. <laughs> Probably mm -hmm. never going to happen, but, you know. Um, I charge For one card, I charge $85. That's Canadian. I have no idea what that is in pounds. I don't have a clue. I'm going to check. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I can kind of wing it for American. 85 Canadian would be about maybe 69, 70 American, something like that. 71, maybe. Well, did you say 85? 85. 85. <clears throat> oh, so it's about 55 pounds. Oh, so we're similar. Hmm. Actually, we're yeah. in the, sort of the same range. Okay. So our money is worth nothing, basically. <laughs> yeah, so mine's about $50. <laughs> Which price is up? Which price is up, actually? Do you think that? It's hard to do. It is, but also, you know, I, d I don't mind because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty fast now <laughs> after doing all these sketch cards and I, I know what I'm doing. I'm not um and ahhing about everything I'm straight and get it done and and sent away so i'm I'm happy to do them for that to be fair i mean if it if it's something more intricate, I do need to put my prices up you know if they're having a full background and maybe far away figures, but you know for a close up portrait, that's fine for me so what do you think about sorry i'm gonna kind of <laughs> Uh, uh, what do, what do you think about the 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 contrast between making it um, uh, sustainable for you as a price, you know, a price per card to make it sustainable for you so that you know you make a living, pay your bills and stuff, and keeping things affordable for people? It's a really hard line to walk. Well, because I'm fast, like say, I can probably do about five a day, so five times three, uh, you yeah. got about. 100. I can earn 150 pound in a day from my own personal stuff. That's if you've got the orders there. I mean, I, I always, I always do have a big commission list I'm working through, but I have to. They have to understand if I'm doing card sets, they have to wait. So yeah. I mean, it seems kind of silly that I'm like powering on and doing so much for such little money for these card sets, and there's all that money sat there waiting for me. <laughs> yeah. But. You know, I, I don't know. I, I love being included on sets. You know, if I have to turn one down and it comes out, more, it's a bit sad that I'm not on it, you know. That's uh, it's the same for me. Like, I I haven't done any work for the Star Wars sets this past year. Um, not really because I didn't want to, but, you know, time and situation um, stuff. And well, all that. If you do sell them for a high price, it, they don't work out that much per card. It's... I do feel sad because, you know, I love Star Wars. <laughs> I love painting Star Wars and I've painted so many cards now. I 
I really can. I got it down, you know. I, I really got it down. Except for portraits. Portraits take a long time. Mm. So I rarely do that. That takes a little bit more time. You know, I don't know. Uh, uh, there are we've we've interviewed a bunch of artists that are actually incredibly good and fast at doing portraits and things. You know, mm. I don't know how they do it. Forget Michael Mustermaker, and I go straight in oh. with Ted. I'm like, get lost. <laughs> It gets lightness and everyone just. <laughs> oh, we have to have him back on too. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I would be so that to do that. Before I get to the next question, that does remind me the sketchbook episode, please. We've got two people who, who will be uh, with us. So that's four and all. We'd like to have a couple more. So if you have a sketchbook, you don't have to be a published artist, but if you have a sketchbook and you want to talk sketchbooks, uh, message either Lindsay or me and we will get you on the show that will be December 1st you have to have December 1st free though we don't know what time yet because it depends where everybody lives and we'll organize a time that works for everyone uh, so oh. yeah the, the message either zoidart at hotmail.co.uk is that right? yep wow or ingridhardy32 at gmail.com all small letters all right <laughs> after that um well we do have a, actually a, a question but i think we'd have to ask a, a card um, like a director or something about the canceled sketch cards you know the ones that are rejected and all that what happens to them and actually i don't really know <laughs> honestly so <laughs> I've heard tales of them turning up on eBay and things like that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, sometimes that could happen because, you know, when things get lost in the post, they'll do an auction for all these unclaimed parcels. So they can always come from there and end up on eBay as well. It's true, eh? Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know. That's a question we could find out. Ah. So I think I actually have a couple of names that come to mind that, um, yeah, we could ask about that. Um, that is pretty much it for questions. We do have one thing to mention, and that is from Catprint. Um, Catprint is going to have a cyber sale from November 28th to December 2nd. November 28th to December 2nd. Catprint will have a cyber sale um message go visit the website and they have uh they have a you know send us a message type thing if you want to know more or stay tuned when they let out the details i'll post it in the facebook group i don't know where else to post it um off of facebook if you don't have a facebook account should we set up a group that's not on facebook somewhere i don't know where to do that hmm. Well, depends what, I mean, if your website's got capabilities for, uh, like, a blog or... Yeah, I do, but it's under my name. I'd like to have something that's, like, you know, both of us. I don't want to be just me all the time. It, it... It's fine. Um, it's better, probably better to have it in one place because it's less confusing. <laughs> when you get something through, you get something through, and, you know, I don't mind, honestly. I think I think on my website I'm gonna put a link to yours maybe. Okay. You know, everything's all in the same place. Yeah, you, you know, it's a that's actually a really good point. We should have one central place somewhere. Because even if we end, well, eventually we're going to stop doing this. Eventually, I don't know when, but eventually. But it would be nice to have a a place that's central because it's evergreen. You know, the videos are they're up there and they're going to stay there. So. Yeah, it would nonetheless maybe be worth the time to find one way to put one site somewhere where we can just stuff everything in, even with the Facebook group and all that, but still to have one place. Yeah. Okay, something else to think about. All right, and, and the watchers and listeners, please send us uh, suggestions if you have ideas. We're, we're, we were winging this, this podcast from the start. We are <laughs> winging all the way through next year, too. <laughs> So, you know, just tell us what you're winging it. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, do you think, is there anything else that we should talk about before we quit? I think, I think we've just about covered everything, haven't we? 
I hope people enter the giveaway because we, you know, we want to give something away. Yeah. Give something back. Again, I wanted to, to to get a few more things from different companies, maybe some cards, maybe some art supplies, stuff like that. But I, I just didn't, that actually I would have to do a few months ahead of time because it takes a long time to get replies from people and, you know. Well, if the podcast gets larger, that's a reason for the podcast to get larger. There you I go. Have equipment giveaways and all sorts. <laughs> yeah, equipment. Yeah, we, we, we both could use a bit of new equipment. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we won't go down there. Um, so thank you to everyone for having stayed with us for this past year. I was worried we'd get to 10 episodes and we managed to get to 50. And we've got reservations up until I think 58. So things are good to go. The checklist for the first 31 episodes is done, is off to print. And I'm working on the second checklist for episodes 32 to 60, <clears throat> excuse me, 61, probably, whatever fits on the card. So if you help support the podcast, you'll get the, the checklist cards that will cover the, the cost of that, too. So everybody will get their checklist cards. So, yeah, please stick with us. If you want to come and talk to us about cards and art or publishing, uh, get a hold of one of us. There we go. So, high five, Lindsay. We've done good this year. Oh, this book. <laughs> now we need your turtles. We need each have a turtle or something. I, I'd have a Garfield, actually. I think I'd have Garfield. We can have a little Garfield coming up, and you can have a, yours coming up there. Garfield Ninja Turtle. I've actually got um, a, well, how to train your dragon Ninja Turtle. No. <laughs> When I was in Builder Bear, I got him to put the Ninja Turtle outfit on him before they put the stuffing in so it would fit. <laughs> oh, really? oh, uh, much fun. Okay. All right. Yep. So we'll go see if we really did get dumped by our next interview. We'll just turn this off and I'll turn all my notifications back on. <laughs> okay. Bye. So thank you to everyone. Thank you for watching and listening. Bye. I have to find my stop recording button.